What is going on everybody? Welcome back into Bowery Studios. Who's excited for the next video in the Goliath Bird Eater Tarantula Diorama series? Yes, it's a mouthful and this is an awesome project. I've gone through so many videos, so many different mediums and, and techniques and, and things to build this overall structure. Uh, and I have the, uh, the rock formation and the log sitting over here to the left hand side, ready to go, ready for us to put this amazing spider on. Yes, you can see the spider here in the background. Let me go ahead and get a zoomed in view of that. And as you can see here, this is what it looks like. Uh, not only do I have some of my amazing tumblers kind of displaying in the background, but we have the actual Goliath bird eater itself. Now this bad boy is a total of almost 13 inches in length. Uh, now that is of course before it is, uh, is brought up off the ground so it is designed so that the, the body of the spider can be uh, lifted up off the ground by the legs. Now you can of course self support the body as well if you chose to, uh, but just be, just be aware you don't have to do that. So let me go ahead and grab the item here and we'll bring it forward up towards the camera here. Now, as you can see, this bad boy is already assembled and he is ready to go. I'm going to begin painting this in this video, but I just wanted to give a brief description of the spider itself. Of course, there are four legs on both sides, which are used to support the weight of the sculpture. They are angled so that depending on how the purchaser wants to have their spider projected up off the ground, uh, some of the legs would be lifted up to give the simulation that it's walking or lifting in some way. So for instance, it could be leaning back, it could be leaning forward. It all depends on how the, the purchaser were to angle these legs into position. Now it's a wide base, right? The spider is designed to have a wide projection uh, and it is a total of again, 13 inches from end to end before it's lifted up off the ground, which does shrink its footprint slightly. You will also notice during the casting process, nothing is absolutely perfect because this is my original sculpture design, uh, but you will have two fangs, four legs on each side, and then two front arms. Those front arms can be up or lower depending on the purchaser's desires. And of course, you also get the abdomen. You will get uh, two hand sculpted spinnerets, which will uh, be on little pieces of armature wire that you can put into place. Those will not be out of casting resin. Those will be out of probably a clay of some sort. I would like to make them a little bit textured in some way, but I just didn't want anything that small uh, to have to be shipped uh, in, in, you know, in a mold form. You also have the sternum, the lower coxa, uh, and of course the carapace. The, uh, the eyes sometimes will have little indentions in them where there's little air pockets in the silicone making pro uh, mold making process, and that's okay. So just be aware that you would use your UV resins or your kind of acrylics to detail those eyes the, the way you would like to do so. It is designed to be painted. It's not designed just to be uh, cast it and done. I, I fully expect whoever purchased this, these these uh, these uh, molded um, spiders from me, then they want to do their own detail work for it. You're just using this as the bones to get the project done. So I really do hope y'all enjoyed the creation up to this point of this spider. Uh, it is a beast. It is the king of spiders by mass for sure. Maybe not by, by leg span, but definitely by mass. It's the king. And what we're going to do is we're going to break out some acrylics and we're going to start the overall painting process tonight. So I'm super excited to kick off this video, guys. I don't know how long this video is going to run, but if it, I, if, it, if it runs too long, I'll probably time lapse the majority of it. Uh, a lot of this is going to be a lot of washing, a lot of dry brushing, locking in the overall shades and the colors, and bringing some of these, these sculpted indentions in the legs forward or backwards, depending on how I want to shade and color those. I want to make this one in particular very realistic, and I'll probably create more in the future, maybe like a Black Widow version uh, or like a radioactive oozing one. So just fun ways that I can reproduce the same spider with different painting effects. So, of course, uh, this will be listed on my Etsy shop. Uh, it is a, again, smooth on uh, uh, three, 300 casted item. So just be aware that it is out of a very quality plastic, uh, urethane plastic, and it will last you a long time. It's very durable and the legs have no problem whatsoever supporting their own weight. So sit back and enjoy as we kick off this video in the series. This is really where we're going to start the home stretch towards finishing up this diorama series. And I really do hope y'all have enjoyed it thus far. So sit back and enjoy as we get to painting. All right, you guys, let's just jump straight into the painting process by beginning with my trusted Mars Black. 
So of course, this is just a basic smart spot from uh, Michaels. I've been using the same uh, container hook for probably around almost two two years, maybe. So the paint does does really last a long time, but it's starting to kind of thicken up a little bit. So we'll have to buy a new container soon. But as you can see here, I'm just going to get kind of accenting some of the shadows, the dark recesses, any kind of where, place where I want to have a little bit of a darker tone. Uh, when I do come in with just a main base coat of brown uh, here in the later stages, then I want to make sure that those, those darker spots kind of just stand out to me. I'm also kind of using that as a means to just kind of dry brush over certain areas so that if any of this, this undertoning were to come through, then the, the highlight, any of the high spots on that dry brush would kind of be a different tone. Um, of course, a lot of that is going to change as I go through the painting process in general. And depending on how I do future uh, uh, color tones of the same spider cast, if I do like a fire spider or like an, uh, like a, uh, an ice breaking spider or um, like a frost spider or something like that, maybe like a black widow or a radioactive green spider, and I can kind of tone them the same way with the Mars black. And then after that, I can just have fun with the colors themselves without really having to think about where the shadows and the dark spots are throughout the body. Mainly around the carapace, around the eye sockets, around the mouth, uh, it, uh, the joints of the legs, things like that. A lot of those tend to have a little bit more of a darker tone uh, in, in realistic circumstances. So, so those, uh, those glue joints where I used a uh, uh, JB Weld, as uh, you could also use like a uh, just a high strength adhesive or armature wires to attach these legs if you were to make this purchase from my Etsy shop. Uh, and then paint it yourself. You just uh, would get the legs disassembled or attached, however you ordered that, uh, and then it would be up to you to paint that the way you needed to. By, by painting those uh, those joints black, it kind of uh, allows me to paint the adhesive and the, the, into the overall sculpture, and it just really makes it feel like it's one complete piece without the true seams at the leg joints. Uh, continuing the process here, so as we finish up the Mars Black uh, towards the later portions of this stage of the project, then we'll begin with some dark browns. We're going to uh, uh, hold off on the raw sienna. I try not to use too much of that during this entire build. Uh, instead, I relied more so on my titanium white to, to lighten the tones a little bit, make it a little bit more opaque. But also, uh, we're going to introduce the titanium white into the burnt umber and raw umber just to kind of bring in more of a little bit of a reddish tone to the overall uh, uh, base coat that the spider is going to get before we go into like any inks or any kind of really major highlights and dry brushing techniques later on in the process. It is a little bit of a process just to kind of build up all the layers that we need, but it, the end result is just really well worth the time. So, so as long as you just enjoy the process and just have fun with it, and even if you make a mistake in the mistake in these early stages, then you can always go back in with a wash and just remedy anything that you have a uh, problematic later on in the process. It's very, very satisfying to be able to kind of lock, lock in some of these details and really refine them. So stay tuned and we'll uh, start into the brown here in a few moments. So with the Mars Black kind of base already set in, kind of like highlighted or, or shadowed as it were, uh, we're going to go ahead and begin layering in, and I mean layering, by pushing in this base coat of brown. Now we did this in a, a smooth, uh, smooth on, smooth cast 300, and I plan to use that continuously unless the customer were to use uh, like, want like a dark uh, colored plastic, maybe like an onyx. Uh, so we'll probably use smooth on for for all of the uh, you know practical casting of this, uh, unless somebody orders something very specific uh, and I have to order something different. But I really do like the smooth on products, so that's probably what we're going to stick to. The onyx tends to be just a few dollars more than the uh, the smooth cast 300, but I do like that the white tone just really really opens you up to a lot of, of possibilities as far as uh, choosing where the shadows go yourself. 
And then as you build up these how, these layers, you just want to make sure that you kind of push the first few layers into those nooks and crannies. Because I sculpted this and casted it uh, with so many details already sculpted into the, the, the body and the carapace, there's a lot of recesses there. And we want to make sure that, that no, no little pinprick of white is showing through, and then that would just draw the eye way too much. Later on in the final stages of the process, I will come in with like kind of like almost a pure titanium highlight over some of the, the raised parts of the body, uh, the very top ridges of the carapace around the top parts of the legs, and that just gives it a, a you know a very uh, tone when you're looking at it. So it's just not all brown. It gives it a little bit of age. It makes the spider look like it has some age on it as far as in reality, um, and that way it's not so, some some super uh, uh, young spider as it were because this is a, a full growth so it's almost like 13 inches in length before it's lifted up off the ground after it's lifted off the ground it's probably about 11 inches maybe in length overall so it would be an older spider and it would have a little bit of gray possibly uh, gray hairs maybe some white showing through uh, or maybe it could be shedding some hairs um, uh, throughout the body and they could be graying out a little bit so there's a lot of, uh, uh, of ways that you can look at it. I know that there's a lot of spider experts out there that will probably be watching this and thinking, mm, that's cool, but mm, the color tone is not exactly uh, realistic. It, it, it's pretty close to what I, what I think that the spider should look like. I'll look at some reference photos. Uh, and the end result, I'm pretty happy with. So, so no judgment there, guys. Uh, if you think it should be a different color or tone, then order one and you can paint it yourself. So, so can you continue in the process here with the brown here? Now, I'm not really uh, dictating the brown too much here. I, I really don't care what it looks like. I'm really just trying to get some caked in at the overall general uh, uh, color tone that it should be. Uh, and then if I need to refine it, which I will with some uh, inks and things like that, then we will do so. So we're just kind of try to push that in, continue the process with the brown, and then once the, the, uh, the brown is completely base coat, coated, then we'll flip it over and we'll do the bottom as well. Alrighty, so with the, the upper part of the body pretty much kind of locked in a little bit. Now, of course, we're going to add a lot more layers here. So a lot of that white that is peeking through will get completely covered up over time. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip her upside down here, and we're going to go ahead and begin coating the bottom. Now, the bottom, in my my estimation, would be quite a bit darker than the upper part. Uh, maybe maybe it's kind of, the top part is catching more glares or something like that. So we're going to go a little bit more heavy with the, the marsh black, especially around like the coxa of the legs where there's a lot of reason recesses around the sternum, around the, the abdomen, towards where the book, uh, book lungs would be, uh, and then all the way back to the spinnerets. I still have yet to make those spinnerets, but they'll just be something small that I kind of add on uh, on a uh, customer by customer basis, because technically you don't really need to add those in for it to really feel complete. Um, but I will probably add these in for Yvonne uh, Hunt over at Kirsten Conjured, who had actually been the first to commission this uh, piece of art here. Now, don't forget that this is, in uh, a reality, a full-length content uh, playlist. It has been around, I'd say, what, 13 or 14 videos long of us creating, sculpting, casting, uh, making silicone molds of all sorts of stuff, painting, rock formations, foam work, layering foam, uh, even painting a, a, a American walnut base. So there's been a lot of work that has went into this spider and the diorama itself, and she has been so patient along the way, uh, waiting for this product. I'm so, so proud that I was able to give her such a realistic item, and I'm really happy when she opens this box, it's going to give her the wow factor that she's been hoping for. I'm super excited. Now, I have been keeping her updated throughout the process of this creation, uh, and I think that she's really enjoyed that. 
uh, I probably would say that it's the most uh, updates that I've ever sent throughout an entire process because this is probably one of the largest projects that I have made for a customer. Not per se by size, but definitely by, by length of time invested. And it probably took a little bit longer just because I decided to go out of my way to make a molded cast of all of the body parts of the spider so I could reproduce it for my Etsy shop. Whether that be a paintable or whether it, it be a fully painted and flopped item. Which you'll see at the end of this video. So we're going to do the same process here. Some of those book lungs right there are really kind of hard to cover up. It's really smooth. I left those smooth when I, when I sculpted those so that they stood out quite a bit more. So although they, they're there, um, the front book lungs, apart from the back book lungs, uh, the front ones will be a little bit darker, a little bit more blended, whereas the back ones are so smooth that the paint is really having trouble connecting to that, that um, smooth cast 300. And I have to come back quite a few times, flip it back over, and do a few more layers. As long as it has a nice good caramel color, then I'm really cool with how it looks other than that. Uh, so this is just layer number one, and as I go through more layers here in a few moments, this bottom around the coxa and the sternum will start to darken out a lot. I want them to be very dark, I want them to be very rich in color when you flip this over, or if you were to peek an, uh, up under the item. So now we're kind of waiting and we're going to go ahead and start applying some raw sienna. I know I said I didn't want to use too much raw sienna here, but I decided to use some anyways. So what we're doing is I'm trying to uh, give those those undertones of the, the little indentions that I had sculpted in the sculpting process some lighter color. A lot of the, the pictures that I found as references on Google and, and all sorts of different uh, spider websites did show that some of those little indentions in the legs were a lighter tone. It just didn't feel right to me. So I do come in later with an ink and I do give it quite a bit of a more of a dark tone. And I really do think it sets off those legs quite a bit more than it did when I was applying the raw sienna and titanium white. It really sunk down into those nooks and crannies and it really did uh, apply a really good contrast when I came over it with the darker and, uh, and then lighter uh, colors of, of uh, dry brushing towards the later stages of the project. So you can see I'm still trying to get some of that, uh, that raw sienna on there and I do apply that quite a bit over the joints in between the legs so it kind of gives a nice little sheen there as you can see because that's really smooth. Most of the texture is on the main parts of the legs and not per se the joints. I wanted those joints to kind of stand out when I sculpted this and they're really doing that. They're really pulling their way and making it look really cool. I also didn't want the joints to be completely like really, really big. I wanted them to kind of blend well together uh, and I told, told y'all during the sculpting process when we were using monster clay at the time that I felt like if I left, left those joints too large then it was going to look more like an alien and I just didn't want that. I wanted to kind of shrink them down a little bit, make it, for, make it feel a little more organic and we made it look a little bit more like a spider. So we're going to go ahead and continue using up that raw sienna and I'm going to introduce some burnt umber there. I'm going to start to try bringing a little bit more of that red tone and we're going to go ahead and go over the entire carapace here. I'm still working to push that color into the carapace, uh, little ribs as it were, little ribs of the carapace. And I want to make sure that I'm able to define the colors here. So I'm going over the higher ridges with a lighter color. And then as I come in with the inks later in the process, I will go through the darker colors on the lower portions of those ribs. So here you can kind of see I'm kind of applying more of a little bit more burnt umber and um, uh, raw umber into those little nooks and crannies there. Very much watered down. Also going to go ahead and give those fangs a good layer of uh, Mars Black. I do this a few times just to make sure that that, that, that the dark black really stays uh, true throughout the process, even if I kind of overpaint a little bit. And I also come in later on and I give it an ivory black, which is just a pure, gorgeous, um, uh, very glossy black. And uh, I want to make sure it has those details popping through. So you also notice that after a while, I do come back quite a few more times and give the eyes quite a bit more layers than the rest of the body. Uh, I probably gave it about six or seven layers, and I actually come in with some puffy paint later on in the process, just because I wanted to have a little bit more definition. I felt the the, the you know, the, the realistic spider eyes, when you're not looking for them, they are really small and tiny, but I really wanted them to kind of draw the eye when you were up on 
on top of the spider looking down. So I did make them a little bit more prominent than what they probably would have been, but I just wanted them to kind of draw the eye and them to be very, very nice and prominent and black looking. Um, so I do come in with a, some puffy paint, kind of give them a little bit more of a, 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 a dome shape. Um, twice later on in the process. It's minuscule, but it does matter. Just because when I casted this, uh, it's really easy for little air pockets to get stuck up in there. And of course, you can use UV resin or any kind of uh, product that you have to kind of smooth those out and add definition to those to make them more prominent. And in this situation, I just used, used some puppy paint there. So. So just be aware that I did do some work on those, uh, those eyes just to kind of get them to perfect shape and perfect size. And although they're not probably truly realistic as far as, as projection up and away from that part of the eye uh, of the body there, uh, what's that little, little eye hump, then, uh, then uh, it, I think it looks pretty good. Tell me in the comments, do you think the eyes look pretty good or do you think they're a little bit too prominent? I think they look okay. Making sure to go over the abdomen with a nice uh, wash here. I'm really going in with a lot of, of burnt umber here. I want to make sure that we have that little bit of that, that redder tone as a port from like a, a burnt umber, which is more of a muddy tone. Uh, on the bottom of the body, I do a little bit more of a burnt umber mixed with my raw umber just to kind of give a little bit more darkness uh, as well as a few more layers of Mars black between the coxa of the legs. But as far as the abdomen, I really want to make sure I can get in all those nooks and crannies and, and fill in those striations before I do any kind of dry brushing later on in the process, uh, or even before we uh, add the flocking um, hair to it as well. Uh, I did specifically order flocking, uh, grass flocking for uh, railroad terrain in the correct color so that I could come in and give this a nice coat of uh, hairy legs. Um, so this girl hasn't shaved. She is completely hairy and she's going to be just like a, a gnarly looking spider. I almost probably applied too much hair to it, but I think that even as it deteriorates or it kind of brushes off to your shipping, then I think it's more than enough. I really went shallow uh, as far as hair around the top of the carapace. A little bit, a little bit shallower than I should have went on the abdomen as well and then of course we put a lot of hair around the mouth and the fangs and we'll come back around that uh, when we get to that stage and I'll kind of explain more of that. You can really start to see the color of the spiders really starting to show through now uh, and what we're doing now is we're applying just some uh, some darker tones around where the carapace is uh, bridging down into the joints of the legs. I want to make sure that that really doesn't draw the eye too much but it just needs to have the right uh, shadow tones so that it just looks proper. Here I am coming in with a little bit of that ink. Now this is a roundy and dollar ink here. I really love my sepia, you guys. You know in previous projects that I love using sepia and this is that case. I'm also using a little bit of burnt umber here. So don't be, uh, just be aware that there are two colors here that I'm introducing depending on which uh, kind of tone I need. Uh, of course the burnt umber is uh, adding quite a bit of more of a brown overtone, kind of uh, browning out a lot more of the, uh, the, the brown that's already there darkening it out a little bit and of course the sepia is a very very dark tone so it's uh, really going to deepen all of those recesses as I apply that and it's just going to accentuate any of those shadows that I have already. I really like to introduce my uh, some, some acrylic inks into my acrylic painting and I really do think it brings a lot of life to the project and a lot of richness as well. So here we are we're going to flip it back over even just as it is now the bottom is looking pretty good but it feels a little bit chalky doesn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to start in with a brown tone here and we're going to do the same thing. We're uh, really going to lean in towards the uh, raw, uh, I'm sorry, the burnt umber, I almost said raw umber, uh, for, for the majority of this at the beginning. And as we start to accelerate this project, uh, process here on the very bottom, I'm going to start to introduce more and more uh, uh, Mars Black and burnt umber. And as I do that, it's going to start to darken out quite a bit. And I will continue this until I feel like the bottom of the body is as dark as it needs to be. Again, I'm going to refer to what I said before. I want it to be rich. I want it to be dark. I want it to be dingy. But I want it to also look a little bit glossy as well. So like if, if the outside of the legs are a little bit dingy, I want the coxa underneath the, where the maul is or where the fangs are. So I want that to be very, very glossy. <clears throat> so when you flip it over, if you look under it, it has a little bit of a shining of a light to it. So that's very really important. We're not going to do any kind of clear coats over this. It's going to be a raw acrylic painting. So we want to make sure that we can kind of, uh, accentuate whatever we can uh, without having to rely on any kind of clear coats. If I do some clear coats later on in the process, it'll just be little water droplets or something like that. It won't be too much. Uh, I may add a little bit of a UV resin drip to the fangs perhaps, but that won't be too much at all. 
making sure to paint the, the, uh, the inside of the mall there. Now we're going to come in and we're going to get that little bit of uh, rouge there in a little bit. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll bring some of those pink or redder tones in quite a bit later in the process just to bring that mouth to life. Continuing to add on more of the browns here. Same process as the top. We're going to continue on until I am happy with the tone. So sit back and enjoy as we continue with the browns all the way around. You guys, so you can see I'm using the heat gun here. I am accelerating the dry time on my acrylics while not completely drying it out. Uh, I want to make sure it has a little bit of a tack tackiness to it. I believe when you do like a tacky, like a, a new coat on a tacky coat, it really does have a little bit of a better bond than if you do like a, a wet on a dry. Is that just me, or is it the same kind of bonding between the acrylic molecules? I don't know. Let me let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? I know it's just me, just as an everyday just chilling artist i'm not quite sure but i feel like a tacky uh, a paint on tacky method also increases the overall strength of the painting as well as long as it doesn't pull up any of those undercoats speaking of undercoats those book lungs on the back back of the admin do want to pull up the paint they're so smooth the smooth cast 300 absolutely is a smooth 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 uh, urethane plastic so if you are sculpting anything that has like a, a really smooth surface maybe like a skull or something like that you do need to apply quite a few layers and let those completely dry before we add new layers otherwise it just pulls up those layers without even thinking twice Going in, I'm going to apply some black, uh, morph black to the interior of each of the leg joints here. I'm also going to darken those out, and after I apply the morph black, then I'll come back after the fact, and I'll add a little bit more brown overtone over these, just to kind of make them blend in just a little bit. So you can kind of see it's just layer after layer after layer until we're getting the absolute perfect brown tone that we want with, while we see the shadows underneath. Alrighty, so we got the, the legs and joints kind of uh, blackened out the way we need to. We got them kind of overpainted with some browns. And I, although I'm kind of nitpicking over them here and there, we're going to continue adding color to the undertone of the carapace as well as the, uh, the, the ribs, I, I say ribs, on the top of the carapace. I want to make sure that those have a really uh, ribbed defined effect and we're going to continue adding the brown darker colors in between the higher tones of, uh, of the higher ribs until we can get a really nice definition between them. I really want that to have like kind of like a, a really defined shape and I really think it looks really cool when you contrast it against everything else. It really draws the eye to the top of the spider and that's where I want the eyes to settle and then I want them to drift down to those huge fangs below. Now I'm starting to introduce a little bit of a, of a Naples yellow here, as well as a titanium white. I'm really doing a light brush coat of, uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, these uh, higher tones and higher colors. And I want to make sure that I can get a good, nice uh, a brush coat over those uh, those higher ridges of all of those little nitpicking, little itty bitty hair striations that I put in that carapace. You can really see it really gives it a lot of character, a lot of definition. You can see all of those browns and uh, uh, the darker tones and lighter tones underneath that white tone. And it's not the last white tone that I will do, but it's really starting to get there. And here soon we're going to start to work on the hair. You can really see how that whiter tone over those rich browns and those shadows really start to bring it to life. It gives a little bit of age to the spider and makes it feel more its size. It makes it look more mature. So I was really not happy with how the abdomen was looking here. I really felt like it needed a little bit more oomph to it, uh, with along with the legs and the carapace, which looked absolutely amazing. But I didn't want it to really look the same. I wanted it to look a little bit different. I wanted it to look a little bit healthier, kind of standing out a little bit, make sure that the, the spider looked really nice and fit. And of course, when we come over with some hair, it's going to kind of blend this in a little bit. But I felt like it needed more brown. So I went ahead and I added more raw umber uh, and burnt umber to it, just to kind of give it more of a rich color. And then we're going to go ahead and finalize the very bottom here, which we're going to do now. So you can see here, I do go over those book lines again. Again, they're really not holding the color too well. But over over time, after about four or five layers of browns, it really is starting to look pretty good. I do like that it holds the sheen quite well as compared to the rest of the abdomen. And I really do think they stand out quite well. I'm really focusing on the tips of the legs here. Now, although they are uh, normally known for their little pink toes, or lighter colored toes, I decided to give them dark toes. I just felt like they looked really good. So what I did is I applied a more flat base and I went over those with multiple layers of the browns. Along the process, I decided that I applied just a pink tone to the mouth. All of the reference photos I saw had a nice uh, pink uh, tone to the, the maw of the mouth. Now I started off with a nice rich alizarin uh, crimson here and we're gonna tone that wet on wet technique to a different color. So what we'll do here is we're going to start off with that, and then I'm actually going to start to introduce a little bit of titanium white as well as some pink rose from Winsor & Newton straight from the tube here. And I'm going to blend that wet on wet into the mall to give it a nice rich pink tone. Now when I come in here later on in the process and I apply those flocking hairs to this to kind of really bring it all together to make it feel like, oh wow, that's really going to take a bite out of me, then that pink will kind of show through and it will be barely visible, but just visible enough to make it feel realistic. As you can see here, I'm starting to apply that pure titanium white now. These are the final highlights before we move on into the flocking stage. You can really see it's really starting to come together, you guys. Looking amazing.
All righty, you guys, with the painting completely finished up, we're going to begin the process of applying the flocking here. Now, I've already tested out a few segments here, and I kind of liked how I, I've, I've developed it. I've kind of figured out how I wanted to do it. I, I, what I did is I applied it to the legs by applying it with a, a, um, a pair of tweezers and then gently pulling it down the length of the legs, applying gentle finger pressure to apply that to an adhesive. Now, in this picture, I am using E6000 Clear, and what I'm doing is I'm painting this on with a brush. I'm going to angle the spire up at a uh, upward trajectory so that I can bring that that uh, that flocking down with a flocking applicator so it kind of has a really strong um, uh, spike to the rear of the body there. I really want it to kind of be angled towards the, where the spinnerets are and kind of angled down towards the body, uh, the, the base of the abdomen as it kind of curves around. But as long as I can get it on there and it's kind of angled the right way, everything apart from that is kind of extra. So you can really see that the hairs on the legs really do really bring it to life. It looks really good. It, it, it just it, it accents everything so well. Now this is before it gets a shave. No, nah, maybe not a shave. It gets a trim. So after uh, I apply a few layers of this here, uh, what I'll do is I'll come in with some scissors, really sharp scissors here, and I will trim off any remote isolated hairs that just are going the wrong direction and we'll kind of give it just some some pruning because uh i don't i don't think that any pictures that i found um i don't think any of the spiders look really un, unkempt and the hairs were just going in every single direction so i want to kind of refine them and make sure that they're going where i need them to go i'll apply a little bit of gentle finger pressure to those hairs to kind of just push them in the right direction and then we'll let the e6000 adhesive do the job and we'll let it dry Hopefully you're enjoying this process here, but you will notice that I'm not using my finger in this portion of the video. I'm actually using a fan brush. Yes, it's an old damaged fan brush that already has an adhesive already attached, attached to the end of it, so it's pretty much worthless for painting. But it is good for glitter and, and hair and, well, now hair. <laughs> so this is the first time I've ever actually used flocking, so it turned out quite well. I'm happy with how it turned out. Let me know in the comments what brand of flocking do you like to use for any of your projects, whether that be railroads or D&D uh, &D or anything you have. Doesn't that hairy spider look gruesome? Absolutely incredible looking. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So as we start to roll into some highlight clips of you really seeing some close-ups of this spider, I really do hope you all enjoyed the video. If you continued watching to this point, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really pushes me to make more videos of the same content. 
But of course, if you just want to see more of this video, you can check out the playlist of this entire Goliath Bird Eater Tarantula series at the very end of this video. So stay tuned through the highlight clips and you'll see that very soon. And make sure you stay towards the end of the video because at the very end is a sneak peek of an upcoming video. Another sculpt, silicone mold, and casting of another animal for the same project. So stay tuned for that. What do you think, you guys? I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed putting it together and being able to see this entire spider that I sculpted from Monster Clay to fruition is absolutely incredible. Thank you for watching! Check out all of these awesome videos.